Um, I want to ask about whether you think Muslims and Christians worship the same God. Okay. Again, the, the caveat goes. So when I talk about Islam, it's the what the deity, Quran, and Muhammad teaches. Okay, this is not, again, be very popular, but I think in their ignorance, most Muslims direct their worship to Allah. And I think maybe that's what the catechism says. Right. Like, like, how can you reject something you don't know, in a way? And right. our heart's desire is to worship one God. Right. And then uh, most Muslims, not ever having heard the good news, they direct their worship to God the Father. But Allah, again, in purposes of clarity in this conversation, I don't. Uh, Allah is not the same as God the Father. Mm -hmm. So, like when you go to the before humanity, time itself, the universe, the Trinity was there. So it was this perfect. It God was already relational, and um, and the Muslims again without understanding it, I think they completely reject it because. Again, Muhammad was living in this polytheistic culture, mm. and he did not get Trinity. Right, I mean, he didn't explain that yeah. in the Quran. It's evident that he doesn't understand what the Christians mean by the Trinity. Right, like so. At the end of days, when uh, there's judgment, general judgment, Allah asks Prophet Jesus, "Oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say worship me and my mother along with Allah?" So right. they think they like. Think that Christians meant that maybe Mary was part of the right, Trinity. Right, so it's like Father, Son, right. and Mary. So he didn't understand it. And mm -hmm. it's one of the, like, you talk to a Muslim, they're going to bring up Trinity the first thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the biggest, I try to explain my brother, like my own brother, when he he questions he questions Islam. Mm. He's like, I just, you can't wrap your head around it. And I'm like, nobody can. Like, you know, that St. Augustine has that um, vision of this little mm. child pouring water from the ocean in this little hole and he approaches this child he says you can never fit the entire ocean in there and he's you know this little child supposed to be an angel neither can you fit trinity in your head mm. so it's like and it's like you know saint augustine wrote so much about the trinity mm -hmm. and it's really helpful like i think if you you have muslim um friends like don't start with the like the regular iconic depiction of Trinity is, yeah. looks so bad to Muslim eyes because, you know, yeah, they... it's very difficult. I, I want right. to because I want to talk about that in a second. Um, but it, here's my idea about the the God we believe in, and I, I just I'm thinking this through, and I want to get mm -hmm. your take on it. So, like, I do not think that um, our Mormon friends worship God. I mean, they have this bizarre, perverted understanding that God was once a man, that he progressed to godhood. You know, depending on who you're listening to, they'll say he maybe he lives on a planet, that he definitely has a body and these sorts of things. Um, whereas I'm a little more sympathetic to those who say that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. And here's here's why. Uh, suppose you give the five ways of Thomas Aquinas to somebody who is neither Christian nor Muslim and they read through the five ways and that's all they have. And they've got no other influence regarding religion. And after they read the five ways, like, OK, like I believe like in like this all powerful creator who's Fine. sustaining the world now this kid does he believe in god i think we'd say yes right. e even if he doesn't understand or have any concept of the trinity mm -hmm. even if he comes to think that this god uh, has all sorts of bizarre attributes you know as he mm -hmm. goes on in his study without being influenced by christians or any other religion i think we'd say yeah he believes in god but maybe he comes to hold a perverted view of the this god and right. it, it seems to me that we could say that muslims and christians worship the same god but that muslims have a perverted view of god now i know that's going to get me in trouble with some people and i'm open to changing my mind on that mm -hmm. but what do you think see i would agree thought? with that that's the case with like your regular muslim who kind of didn't have any any other option you know the like they never heard of christ but my problem with um the Quran and the Muhammad, and I think Muhammad had the chance, like, I just want to go find out what the Christians actually believe before I kind of put this in the Quran or whatever, you know, like whatever, before I become so. So I think your case is true for most Muslims, that okay. they direct their worship. To a creator of the universe who is independent right. and separate from. They're not pantheists. They don't think the universe is God. They believe in a God that exists from all eternity outside of the world and who made right. all things other than himself. Yeah, and I have hard time. This is the reason I have hard time to just saying we believe we worship the same God. Yeah. Because um, 
the society that's created by believing Allah is completely different. Like it shouldn't be. If we believed in the same deity mm-hmm. in the way most Catholics perceive, our societies should be somewhat similar to each other, right? I mean, but the social structure in most Muslim countries is so like anti-Christian hmm. that, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of looks like they have morality and, you know, yes, they do, you know, they don't, like they're against homosexual reunions and all that. Yeah, it's like we have some common ground there that we can build on. But all in all, like that master slave relationship with Allah trickles down to every level of the Muslim society, mm-hmm. which is not compatible with an, like an, with an authentic Christian society. So that's why I have a hard time saying, and I think people use this as an excuse to say, hey, I don't have to teach them the good news. Like they believe the same God. We believe you go to heaven that way. Mm-hmm. We go to heaven this way. Right. That's yeah. Yeah. And which is like, I think that's what's being used. Like the Catholic missionary activity is all but, but lost. In, like God have mercy. Yeah. And yeah. Now we need to recover this idea. It's, it's so sad that we have to say recover this idea. Christ is the only way to the father, to heaven. Without Christ, you will be damned for all eternity. So if we Catholics are not evangelizing, not just our Muslim friends, but whoever who doesn't accept the Catholic faith, we're not we're we're we're, we're making Christ's last commandment, you know, in, rather than our first priority, which it ought to be, sort of whatever. It's not really a commandment, it's a suggestion. Right. It's not important. But like what's more important in the face of eternity? If we truly believe in an eternal life, this life on earth, let's say you live a hundred years, it goes like this. Yeah. Like it's nothing. A drop of sand in Yeah. And yeah, you can change the ocean. one person's life. I mean, this is one of the reasons. You know, I wrote this book and I'm like, you know, does is does it reach people? Yeah. But I'm, if we can change I don't know if you can see this or not, but for, from Islam to Christ. Yeah. I love book. the front cover. It's very beautiful. I love it too. There's nothing worse than giving a book to a publisher and then them ruining it for you. <laughs> Because, of course, they choose the name, they choose, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it looks good from Islam to Christ. They do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like if you can change one person's life eternally Mm -hmm. during your lifetime, it's worth it. Like, you can raise your kids Catholic. It's like all the suffering. I'm like, you know, not that I'm suffering, but like all the hardships of parenthood is worth it. Yes, life is brutal. Yeah, and it's like, and this is a good life. Like, you know, in Mm -hmm. America, like most of us are blessed with a good life. Hmm. So, I mean, how much more do we owe to our our Muslims, brother and sisters? And that's the Islamophobia part. I think without this understanding that they are, like they, God loves every Muslim. Like they, he wants their conversion. He wants to be, you know, he wants to be father to each one of them. Hmm. Like he doesn't love me more because I'm Catholic. Like mm-hmm. he loves them as much as he loves me, mm-hmm. you know, because that's what kind of a father he is. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. wouldn't be? What? Why wouldn't be teach them? But if we if we don't have this understanding of it, a general, your general Muslim is just another threat, and maybe that is an irrational fear of I Islam. See. Like right? Like no, you need to look at Muslims through the eyes of Christ. Yeah, children of God. Yeah, right. Who God is calling into a relationship with Himself, like He is us. Right. Yeah, I see. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.